Welcome back, welcome back to episode eight, the Man to Man Pod. Uh, me, myself, yours truly, Darius Butler, my main man, co-host Antoine Bethay. Back, man. A lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of sports news this week, man. Big news week. Some good news, some bad news. Uh, so we'll start with the good news here, man. Uh, Kittle, Kittle just got that bag. Just reset the market for tight ends, um, as he should, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Uh, one of the best tight ends in the league. Uh, Kelsey's actually working on a new deal right now as we speak. I'm sure to be done probably sometime uh, today. But uh, man, what, what you think about what you think about Kittle getting paid, man? Oh, these tight ends well getting deserved. paid, should I say? Well deserved on both ends, man. Like you said, uh, Kittle, um, obviously he's coming into his own, man. I would say mm-hmm. uh, probably the best tight end um, in the game. He can do it on 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 both ends, catching the ball. Uh, y'all's out to catch, and he does it in the trenches, man. Um, good block yeah. tight end. So he's definitely um well deserved of what he uh what he got today. Uh, Forty million guaranteed as far as injury, uh, mm-hmm. thirty million at signing. Um, so you know, like you said, man, big money bag for uh for George Kittle, man, and uh the way they use him out there and um in San Fran, man, he definitely is able to um showcase his skills, man. So. Hats off to him, salute to him. And like you said, Kelsey, man, another uh, another uh, good tight end, a uh, great tight end, man. Yeah, he does great. a lot for yeah. the Kansas City Chiefs, one of, um, one of the weapons for for, for, for Pete Mahomes, man. So um, his extension is well-deserved as well. Um, Kansas City, man, they giving out that bag this offseason. So, <laughs> man, where, 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 where are they finding this money from, man? They done locked up Mahomes. They gave him a half a billy. Locked mm-hmm. up um, – Locked up Jones. Kelsey now for five more years. Locked up Chris Jones. Like, where are they getting this money from? I don't know. I think um, I was looking at something earlier. They had they had a bunch of money. Um, they had a bunch of money um out there to 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 use, man. And the crazy thing about it, you got to think about it. Pete Mahomes told Chris Jones he left some money out there for him. So just yeah, just imagine somebody saying that I left some money out there for you, and they got a half a billy. Half but, um, a billy, man. But that's 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 good for that franchise, man. Um you know, stamping those three guys and um, they can really build off those guys on the offense and defense side of the ball. Yeah, now, but obviously for both of us being DBs, uh, you know, that tight end position, that's one of the positions where you, you know, it can kind of it can kind of mess up the math for a defense, right? Because there's certain guys mm-hmm. that you put out there. Um, and I know, and I, w- I would assume that's why you you, you put a Kittle uh, probably slightly above a Kelsey because he's one of them guys that you put out there at 12 personnel you don't know where he's going to line. I played against Kittle back in 2017, I think. And it was really before he came into his own. But you mm-hmm. kind of saw the glimpses earlier. Okay, this cat, okay, he can block and he's, he can split out here and line up as an XY receiver. So um, that's why I would I would give him the edge as well over Kelsey just because he can change that math. As a D coordinator, if I'm calling the play, do I call a run defense? Do I call a pass defense? Um, is that kind of why you put him, put him at the top of the list? Nah, that's exactly why. Um, yeah. I think you hit it. You hit it right on the head. Just as far as when you throughout the week, you know, you kind of going over the, the tendencies of the offense. Like you said, twelve personnel, uh, twenty one, eleven personnel, whatever the case may be. But having a guy um, like Kittle out there on the field, um, you never know. You can really um, tell. Okay, is it going to be pass? Is it going? Is it going to be run? Whereas I would say with Kelsey, um, mm-hmm. with him on the field, you can kind of determine. Okay, this is going to be seventy five percent pass. Um, if he goes out and if, if he goes off the field, you know that percentage of run goes up. So yep. um, that's the only reason why I was I would put Kittle um, one because he can do a you know do it both in the run game and the pass game. But no knock on Kelsey, no knock on at Kelsey all, at all. Yeah, he's definitely he's definitely a playmaker. He definitely does um, things in the passing game that you know some tight ends can't do. Um, I played against Kelsey um, two years ago, and mm-hmm. they had me following him. This is my 13th year in the league, and they had me following him um, over the uh, across the field, man. It was a, it was a, it was gonna be, a, it was a tough day, you know. Just yeah. with, um, the, the type of the type of routes that they was running for him, um, pick routes, and just um, all the things that he could do, man. And um, I played against Kittle as well, and one of them things he was like, I was trying to get my hands on him first, um, mm-hmm. but he was strong too. He strong was strong, dude, and yeah. he could block, man. Strong dude. So um, again, man, hats off to both of those guys, man. Um, they're definitely changing the uh, the tight end position, like we said. Those matchups, where we're gonna put a linebacker on them, are we gonna put a a safety on them? In some cases, um, are we gonna put a nickel on them? So they definitely, like you said, they changed the math 
uh, for the defense. And I and I've seen too. I've seen Kelsey be following, like you said, they had you following around. I've seen him be matched up with uh, with number one corners. I'm talking about top flight, Jalen Ramsey's Gilmore. Like, hey, we got to have you on that guy on this third sure. down. So those guys are clearly, I think, uh, a cut above at the top. Uh, obviously, got Grunt coming back in the fold too. But um, mm-hmm. I guess round out, round out your top five. You know, you don't been around for a while. You don't see shoot Tony Gonzalez, Gates, Grunt. Who would be the top five guys? So I guess the next three after those top two when it comes to tight end. Then after them two, man, I put Zach Ertz. Um, yep, another another matchup problem out there in Philly. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, seen him twice last year. He can he can do a lot in the passing game. He's just really another receiver. Another um, receiver, there, I agree. You know, I agree. Um, you know, it could be eleven personnel, but with him, it's like ten personnel. You really like four receivers out there on the field. Um, yeah. After 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 number three, man, I think four and five can go um, either which way. Um, it's a bunch of uh, tight ends there that you know um, can really get it done. You got OJ Howard out there in Tampa Bay. I like him. Um, okay, like you like you said, Gronk Gronk coming back in. You definitely got feel though. You definitely got to put him um in that mix and then after that man you got some guys that really don't get talked about a lot but production is really there you got tyler higby out there with the uh with the rams the rams um, yep 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 uh out there he put a lot of uh production and then one of the young boys i like last year i think uh last year was his second year but uh mark andrews out there in baltimore um he did some Bro. work um out yeah he did some work so um you know obviously you can you can kind of you know Pick your poison, but you know yeah. after Kittle, um, Kelsey, Zach Ertz. After that, I'll definitely put Gronk in there. Um, yeah, I'm still, I'm still, Gronk, like Gronk's still in my top three, man. He, 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 <laughs> if you would have went back and, and been with you know a random team, Giants or the the, the whoever, like out maybe not, but he he right back with his boy. You know he's gonna be yeah. a, a, he's gonna be a say he's gonna be a problem in the red zone. Uh, still gonna be a problem in the run game. And uh, like you said, those those tight ends that can do both, and, and it makes it tough. It makes it tough for the game plan and call the right plays. And sometimes, you know, these offenses, these quarterbacks, these coordinators, like sometimes you can't call the right play. You can't be in the yeah. right situation because they come out. They come out twelve personnel, which is one tight. End, I mean, one running back, two tight ends, and then you try out. Uh, let's say you try out sub defense. You know, to match up with uh, with these guys, match up with Kittle, match up with Gronk. Now we just and don't run the ball, ball at you. <laughs> yeah, and if you go the other way, yeah. you put your baby, put three linebackers out there. Now we're gonna spread you out the ball. Yeah. Yep. So it, it, mm-hmm. it is tough, man. It's tough, and that's why you see. I believe that's why you see the tight ends getting paid now. And uh, like you said, Andrews, he's a guy that's not talked about enough yet. But uh, Lamar loves those tight ends out there in Baltimore. So um, he he'll probably have have a big year this year, man. But um, and, and, I guess that's good. I want to piggyback on something that you said. This is for the listeners mm-hmm. and everybody. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there. So <clears throat> out there in, in Tampa Bay, man, like they their offense, I think is gonna be crazy this year. I think oh it's gonna God. be crazy. And I and Tom Brady in his 40s, man, he might be be on the lookout. Him breaking some records, man, some touchdown records, man. You got to think about it. You got whoa, you got, a touchdown record. Hey, hey, what? Hey, 40, you got, 40, you got 40, 43. But listen to what I'm saying. You got you got Byron Leverage as your OC, and he's under the tutelage of Bruce Arians. Yeah, we already know what Bruce, we already know what BA likes to do, and they yep. don't think about the weapons that um, that Tom has, right? So he got Mike Evans. Um yep. What's Godwin. my other? What's the other? Res, uh, Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin, and mm-hmm. then this is where this is where the this is where the Trump call come in now, right? So we just talked about um, <clears throat> OJ Howard. We just talked about um, uh, Gronk, Gronk. and then they got, and then you can't, and break. So we just talked about as far as those matchup problems, even though you don't want to take Mike Evans off the field, you don't want to take Godwin off the field, but what Uh, you going to do if it's 13 personnel? Ooh, you got to put put guys that can match up with that in the run game, and that's going to hurt you in the back game. So for the listeners, 13 personnel is one running back, and three tight ends, right? Yeah. So typically, that's a that's a run that's a run formation. If you're thinking about it as far as as defense, but Very if nice. I'm an off if I'm an offensive coordinator, I'm putting 13 out there. I'm putting everybody in the into the line. Mm-hmm. I'm breaking them, and I'm <laughs> and I'm <laughs> and I'm and I'm spreading I'm spreading them out. Man, you come out line up empty, and then they got shady uh, too. 
They got shady too. They got shady. So you come out of it. Oh man, that could. Yeah, that could that's be, that's, that's a problem, ugly. man. That could that's be a ugly. problem. And I, and, and it, like I said, it doesn't have to be time throwing for fifty yards. But you mm-hmm. know, should we just we just see you know Gronk catch a fifteen yard route, take that jump to the house. Yeah. Um, I'm just interested to see that offense, yeah. man. Yeah. It, the thing, the thing be, about. The offense, the offense is going to be crazy. The thing about Tom, what makes Tom, uh, in my opinion, the greatest, uh, Tom does a great job of, like I said, he makes it to where it's very difficult for the defense to be right. And it's not just Tom, mm-hmm. it's you know, him being on the same page as coordinator as well, but him having the control of that offense to where, okay, this is what this defense looks like. They're geared to stop, right? So let me alert, – alert, alert, alert. Let me change it mm-hmm. up. All right, spread these guys out. We're going for, four verts in. Mm-hmm. I'm going to find a matchup. We played against Tom Brady one time. Uh, I mean, not against him. I was playing with him. We beat the Jets one, one year, like 45 to three or something. And that was at yeah. the time they had uh, Revis and Cromartie on the outside. He threw the ball like 40 times. Didn't target Revis one time. So he's going to find his matchup. Right? Yeah. This is matchup yeah. Mike Evans on Godwin on Break, Howard, Grump. Somebody, whoever has the best matchup, they're gonna find that ball. So, um, yeah, it, it could it could definitely get ugly down there in Tampa, man. And that arm will stay definitely. warm. It's gonna stay warm yeah. all year. So, hey, he might be on to something, man. If he does break yeah. some records, man, Twan definitely called it. Hey, first. hey, what, what what's today's date? August thirteenth, man. August around 13th. Hey, man, I called it. What's what I tell you? Yeah, hey, yeah. Now, now, now that I think about it, I might, I might, I might jump on that train with you, man. Yeah, yeah. Might yeah, jump on yeah. that train. What else, what else we got, man? What else going on? We got college here? ball, man. College ball, man. So, you know, we talked about the good news. Obviously, the guys getting paid, man. But some of the bad news, man, um, some of the, uh, the conferences, man, opting out, deciding not uh, to play ball this year because of COVID-19, um, yeah. which I think, um, you know, is a, isn't a is a bad decision. You know, it yeah. isn't a bad decision, man. These young men um, and obviously coaches and, and, and personnel, man, lives um, – <clears throat> could be, you know, um, in jeopardy or whatever the case yeah. may be, just to determine on um, how bad it is. How you feel about that? Man, you know what? I, I've been going back and forth. So, you know, from the, from the jump, I've been saying, like, I didn't think, you know, any sport, but in my opinion, I didn't think any sport that was operating outside of the bubble was going to was gonna work. Um, yeah. You know, I, you know, NFL, and I watch Hard Knocks, um, and just to see behind the scenes, all the different things that they're doing, all the different preventative measures that they have in place. It honestly made me feel a little better about it, you know, if guys are going to be responsible. Um, right. Now, in the NFL locker room, you have a lot more, uh, you know, mis- responsible, mature people. But obviously, you got a, a, a collection. Depending on your team, you can have more irresponsible guys on your team than you have responsible. Right. So you got a much right. better chance on a professional level. You know, you got your resources. People had their houses where – you know, you can pretty much have, you know, we're kind of all used to quarantine at this point. You can kind of pretty much have what you need in your career for the most part. Now, the mm-hmm. college level, that's why I'm really worried because, you know, I can remember being 18, 19, 20, 21. And it's like it, it'll be tougher, not necessarily for myself, but for my teammates. OK, don't go to the parties. Don't go into yeah. the city. Don't hit the bars. You know, don't make like. Trusting, you know, 18 to 22 year olds to consistently make the right, mature, responsible decision. Uh, I, I can't I can't I can't place a, a solid bet on that. And I think from the college standpoint, the president's NCAA and all that, I think it's a liability issue with them as well, because we see um, I feel like almost every other year or two or three years is some super unfortunate incident that happens on a college campus with a college athlete, you know, whether it's, you know, some type of heat heat stroke or something like something crazy and um yeah. and that is married up with covid and that's the cause of, like, it like it, it can get real ugly legally i'm sure so they 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 they, they toss it out for the most part i think it's gonna be crazy man how the other conferences figure it out and what players are able to do can they transfer can they do that we talked about that a couple episodes in the show i think last episode actually so it's um yeah. i'm, I'm kind of all over the place with it man i don't know <laughs> Nah, man, I'm with you, man. I think you, um, I think you kind of explained it really well, man. Just as well, NFL, um, you know, you got some, you got more mature guys, and um, <clears throat> guys really know um what's on the line, and being able to, you know, go home and do whatever they need to do versus on the college level. I think, you know, um, especially when the other students come back on campus, um, and you know, guys going back to their dorm rooms and things of that nature, and like you said, just having having to make that uh, right decision. 
um, every time, you know, yeah. we were all 18, 19 years old. And regardless of what anybody says, you know, we didn't make the right decisions every time. So for those guys that have to uh, put the ball in their court and make them make that this right decision every time, I think it will be tough. I'm not saying that they can't do it, um, but, Great. you know, it, it'll be tough. But but again, man, I think, um, you know, if, if, if it's a way that we can get it done, I would love for, for guys to be able to go out there um, and be able to play the game they love. And like, I think we, you know, we talked about it in previous um, episodes, especially like for those seniors, that's um, their last year of eligibility, yeah. being able to go out there to play. Um, so like you said, it's a lot of things just up in the air, whether they will play in the springtime, like how would that affect the, the combine? How would that affect the NFL draft for next year? So it's a lot of things just up in the air that we just, uh, we just don't know, man. But a lot of things, man. And crazy. even even so, obviously, you know, I'm concerned with the players and coaches and all that. But then when you think about college ball, you know, a lot of these college, uh, a lot of these places aren't like small college towns. And those college football teams and college football games, you know, that's that's that that means a lot more to those people than any, you know, in even these uh, if, even these NFL games or these big time mm-hmm. games, like some of these little small, you know, cities. Towns like, they, they have, like yeah, they have like cult like followers, and that's like you said, that's their livelihood. Like they may have a restaurant mm-hmm. that just thrives off, you know, the Georgia Bulldogs. Like you know, so it, it, it's a lot of people that's going to be affected negatively. Um, obviously, it's a lot of people that already have been with this uh, COVID thing. So I hope we, uh, you know, we figure this out, man, and we get past this as soon as possible. But uh, it, it is tough. It's tough to just know the effect that it's going to have on this college. Cause we were in those rooms, man. And, and even yeah. you know, as it goes on, we were in those and we we enjoyed. I know I enjoyed my college experience so much, um, you know, just not even with just the football, just just being able to be on campus. These guys are going yeah. distant learning and now they can't play football. And now you got a whole nother recruiting class coming in. The high school kids who may not have football, what do they do? Are they getting recruited off the junior film now only? Mm-hmm. Like, so it's a lot that everybody's dealing with on all levels, man. And um, you know what? Actually, on that note, we'll just slide over to the NBA, man, because I feel like they, they, they've they handled it uh, very, very, very well up to this They're doing it right. Yeah, they 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 doing it right, man. I had my um my questions at the beginning, but they they they've been um you know I don't think they had any positive tests for a while now, and um I know they're going to change their their protocols. They're going to start letting people in, which I don't now. agree with. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I'm like, go ahead, man. Speak your mind on that, man. Like like you said, man, they've been doing it right all the way up to this point. Um, you know, if it's not broke, why fix it? Did I say that right? If it if it ain't broke, yeah, if it ain't broke, I fix it. But yeah, this is the thing, though. So that. with that, say you in the bubble, though. So they done been in the bubble, I don't know how many weeks now. You know, you married, man. You done been away from your wife for however many weeks at this point. I saw Steve, Steve today, I think, yesterday. Like, man, you know, I, I'm all for this some conjugal visits. Here, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, I mean, obviously, I, part of it's an athlete, and the other part is like, okay, you're a man, you know, you got your different, you know, situations, your different needs. Nah, like, so it's like, I definitely uh, get that. But, but at the beginning, what was what was the game plan? Be prepared to be away from your fam this amount of time. Get it, I get it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Being away from the wife, the kids, that's that's tough. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. FaceTime, that, that doesn't do it. I mean, it helps, but it doesn't do it. Yeah. I'm just nervous about that. Um, I think it's you can have they're thinking about each player can have up to four people. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you got a quarantine seven days before. Um, yeah. you can have up to four people, and I and I think children aren't included um in that four people. Yeah, I just feel as though that's that's asking for positive tests because who who knows you definitely if, throw more, more variables in it. Yeah, so who knows yeah. if all those people are quarantining before they come to the bubble. Um, we obviously know that everybody that comes to the bubble is not going to be immediate family. We already know, but that's going to hit full. Um, now they do it. They did have one one stipulation in, in there that they had to be uh they had to be like a long time friend or whatever. Uh, and I right, guess you have I, to prove that somehow, some way. So how, I'm, that's what I'm, how can, can going to be I, like? All right, look, I did I, I DM'd her back in back in uh back in March. So you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like I don't know how that's gonna be proved, but uh man, it's 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 I don't know, it's it's definitely scary. It's definitely scary throwing it variables into something that's that's been working so well. 
Um, you know, so I try to look at it from all angles, you know, the human side, the athlete side. And like you said, at the beginning, I don't know if this was the plan from, from, from the beginning. Um, I, I'm not, it may have been the plan for the beginning that at some point, once they got to the playoffs, then the family would be able to come. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think baseball is talking about actually going into a bubble once they get into a postseason. So, uh, it's going to be interesting, man. Did we have some, uh, did we already have some, 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 some training camp news? Yeah, right, we the did. <laughs> the young, the young boy, man, my young boy out in Seattle, man, Seattle Seahawks, man. I guess it was rough for him. Um, this first couple, but training camp just started. Right, you know just, what I mean? Just started. We not just even started. Yet. Not even a weekend yet, man. Um, and I don't want to butcher his name. Uh, Kima Silver Silverin, uh-huh. um, rookie cornerback yeah. up there in Seattle, man, got cut, man. And you know, to the young guys, man, like you got to ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it worth it? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he he he's sick right now. You know what I mean? Because I think everybody come out of college, all you want is that opportunity. You want yeah. that opportunity to get into a training camp and and do whatever you can do to make the team. And he had that opportunity. Um, and, you know, he, he made a bad decision. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit here and bash him. Um, he made a bad decision. You know, um, the young female tried to come up in the hotel with the with the <laughs> Seattle Seahawks hoodie on. <laughs> and, yeah, I, wonder, I wonder how big he was, though, man. I wonder if he... I hope she was at least like you know, kind of tall, a little dude to her. Man, like, all right, she man, they gotta, you know, gotta put a little bit more. They gotta put a little bit more thought into it the next time, man. But I, um, I pray, I pray and hope that he gets a second chance. You know what I'm I saying? So, um, obviously, it, it's it's not a knock on his character, but then again, man, decision making is key. Um, especially in a young career, man, decision making is key, man. So. Yeah. Um, again, it's one of them things, man. Like you said, them, like you just said, them guys in the bubble, they want them visits. They yeah. want them visits, man. So, but I mean, come on, man. Them dudes, they already in the league. You know, they already halfway the season. They done got bubbled away. They've been with, bro. You not even a week in, bro. A week in. Come on, bro. Like you got it. You got it. You got it. You got. You got to be smart in that. And I. It ain't, it ain't like this is the. I would. I would definitely assume this ain't the first time you heard something like this. I know I've had teammates who have been caught, and uh, you know, yeah. you know, depend on who you are, uh, you know. But you, and that's another part of it too. And that's just real life. Uh, it's, that's you, real. Getting to the fresh sports, like you, you gotta act. How, you know how you can afford to act, like literally. You know, mm-hmm. you, if you're trying to get a, a shot, uh, you know, and like you said, it's it's tough to get in these training camps. It's it's thousands, thousands, thousands of people who want just that opportunity. So, and, and you should be locked in to a point where. Man, whoever that is can wait. Like you shouldn't even be, sure. shouldn't be trying to sneak in, trying to see you at this point in your career. Um, you you know, them, uh, especially with everything that's going on with COVID, man. Like, but you know, you know how you know how it is in training camp. Boys say he got the training camp eyes, man. He got the training camp eyes, man. He looking, he you know what I'm saying. That's one of them things that he got to stay focused, like you said, man. Got to stay focused. And another thing, like you was just talking about, as far as if this was a first round draft pick, we probably wouldn't even hear this story. Nah. And Nobody would have heard. Not not saying that you know it wouldn't be any um, consequences or whatever, but they wouldn't allow this story to get out. So, you know, yeah, fine. You know what I mean. But being a being a late uh, late draft pick or free agent, man, you know you 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 got to keep your nose clean, man, and you know control what you can control. That good old that good old that good old wop undefeated <laughs> undefeated. <laughs> One casualty already, man. But but man, in all serious. I hope I hope he get another shot. And most importantly, I hope uh he learns from it. But not only him, I hope everybody around the league is learning from this. And even in the other leagues, just learn from it, man. It's, just think about it, man. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? We yeah, know we all sure. know how tough it is to to turn that down. It's undefeated at all time, it's undefeated. Undefeated, but undefeated. He, he won't be the, he won't be the he he's not the uh he's not the first, he won't be the last. But absolutely you know, not. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. If you can learn from other people's mistakes, man, definitely do that. Yeah, facts, 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 man. So, all right, yeah. So, um, still, still talking about training camp. Uh, hard knocks, man. I, I, I enjoyed the uh the the, the first episode with uh, the two LA teams charging around. I did get a little confused with the going back and forth with the two teams. They got a little similar colors, throwing me off a little bit. But 
I was definitely interested uh, in seeing, most importantly, the, like the protocols that was going on behind the scenes. Looked like yeah. every precaution. Um, you know, the Rams, I feel like they kind of got ahead of things and built a whole outdoor facility. Sean McVay was, you know, talking 100 miles per hour to his assistant, and they put that <laughs> thing together, man. So it, look, it looks like they're taking all the – the right precautions. Chris Harris had a statement, kind of what we were saying earlier. And he was just, he was talking to the owner actually, Spanos. And he was like, look, man, it's really going to be about guys just being responsible and just taking care of each other, taking care of themselves. And just, just, uh, and the most responsible team basically going to have the best shot. But, uh, so yeah. training camp, training camp definitely obviously going to be a different training camp. This whole season is going to be different. But, uh, you know, guys are doing it and taking all the precautions, man. Different teams are doing different things. Cowboys, they're, they're in a bubble now. Um, down at the hotel. What's your thoughts on all that, man? Man, um, I haven't been able to check the uh, the hard knocks out, but I'm definitely going uh, yep. to uh, catch up on that. But as far as the Cowboys, man, they, they're making some noise. Obviously, it's not talking about that Prescott or Zeke Elliott, but uh, <laughs> Everson Griffin, man, they uh, made up. I think that's a, a good signing, big signing for them. <laughs> um, a, a still a vet, um, still playing at a high level. Mm -hmm. uh, brings you a lot of knowledge, brings you a lot of snaps on that defensive line where when you look at it, man, um, it's deep. You know, I think uh, that rotation can be something really serious where you got Demarcus Lawrence, um, Everson Griffin, Gerald McCoy, um, Alden Smith, Tyrone Crawford, and then Randy oh, Gregory God. if he gets um, if he gets reinstated, man. So you can just think about um, – Within that a game, like a crew behind him. Woo. Yeah, like if I if I'm a if I'm a if I'm a player in the second day, I'm loving that. You know, yeah. just um being able to get to the ball, um get to the quarterback with four, maybe four guys rushing. You really don't have to mm -hmm. send that fifth guy, that sixth guy, um in any type of pressure, man. So being able to 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 to, to even stop the run in a seven man box, you know, yeah. as a de as a defensive coordinator, man, that kind of just widen your range of. Uh, of the of the plays that you can call and things that you can do within that defense, man. So if uh, like any defense, if you got a good front any, seven, a strong front seven, man, you, you that's half the battle right there. What you think yeah. about that uh, that signing and what you think about the Cowboys? Man, huge signing. Like like you said, they only got a one year, uh, six million, I think. So that's a great a great signing for a guy who's still got a, a lot of ball left. Uh, great pass rushing, and and that's kind of like. If you can get if you can get a four man rush consistently, man, that that like you just said adds so much value to the defense. And you saw it last year in the Super Bowl, and the team yeah. one of the teams that got to the Super Bowl with the Forty uh, Nine ers, like they were 49ers. They, they were on that four man rush that could be because of the defense. If I can only rush with four, I got an extra guy in coverage. Now we got seven mm -hmm. guys in coverage as opposed to having to send pressure. And, and then lose because when you when you give something to one pot, you got to take some out of the other pot. So if I'm so, sending five yeah. or six guys, now we're, we're you know it's more one on one matchups on the back end. And we talked about the front, the front, uh, the front the defensive front, and we talked about the linebackers. I think if that defense has any weakness, it's in the secondary. So um, you know having an extra guy back there in coverage helps those guys out uh, tremendously. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, what Mike Nolan does with that depth up front, you know, he's known for, uh, you know, creating chaos and, and kind of being one of those teams that are at the top of the league when it comes to turnovers. And uh, Dallas struggled last year with creating turnovers. So um, hopefully, you know, hopefully they actually make some noise this year because I'm tired of hearing yeah, about them. It's hearing about them and not doing about them. And they, yeah, and they ain't really shaking them. So nah. now we're going to see. Uh, they got all the pieces, man. Offense, defense. They do. Um, so we're going we gonna to see. They take precautions with the bubble. We're going to see. We're going to see what the Cowboys about, man. No, nah, for sure, man. Like you said, man, wrapping it up, man, the NFL training camp, man. We're going to um, talk about our next our two guests for next week, man. I think it's going to be uh, really exciting, man. Um, one I had a pleasure um, playing for. He's now the head coach um, at Boston College, man, Jeff Halfley, man. We call him Half. Um, he spent some time, um, like I said, he was in, um, in San Fran with me for two years. And then from there, he went to, uh, to Ohio State. And, um, and he got the nod this, uh, this past year, man, head coach at Boston College. So he'll be able to, um, you know, take some time out of his busy schedule. I was there in um, training camp and, and things of that nature. He'll be able to spend some time and we can ask him some questions as far as, you know, um, how they're dealing with the COVID-19 uh, and how he feels about you know, some uh, big conferences opting out to play this year, man. So definitely, man, y'all, 
y'all tune in next week. Um, so we can so when we have Jeff Half. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about that. And uh, also, man, we're gonna have uh, our guy, man, Mikey Taylor. Man, uh, Mikey Taylor was a 14 year pro skater, uh, turned entrepreneur. He's the president of Commune Capital. Um, doing some good things, man. Uh, really trying to give back uh, to the community to get some passive income to guys, you know, transferring um, from the skate world to real world. And it's kind of the same thing that, you know, us football players, we kind of deal with um, as well. You know, we get majority of our money in a short time and uh, we have to uh, stretch that money um, through our lifetime. So he's doing some good things at uh, Commune Capital. And also he started a, um, a brewery, St. Archer. Um, did some big things with that solar to Miller course, um, for some big money, man. So, uh, Mikey Taylor, he'll be a guest next week as well. So again, man, if you got any, uh, professional skateboarders, man, definitely tune in. And, and again, man, you know, I'm Antoine Pate, uh, my guy, Darius Butler, and that's another episode of the Man to Man Pod. Yeah, yeah. sir. <laughs>